everybody. I want to welcome you back to another quick tie. My name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Go Over Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. And uh, this quick tie is being brought to you by Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. Uh, we're going to be tying today the Murdoch Minnow, and this is coming out of Season 6, Episode 10. You can see the fly uh, just down below there. That's what we're going to be working on here in a minute. Um, before we get there, I want to remind you to like and subscribe to this video. Hit that little bell icon. It's going to notify you um, every time we have a new video come out. Um, it'll let you know. And I'm going to be tying out of my Season 6 kit. Okay, just go ahead and open yours up if you are as well and grab the Episode 10 package. Now, there's two flies in there and one of them is going to be this minnow. Um, if you're not tying out of our Season 6 kit, that's totally all, all right. If you have the individual packages, uh, just grab the proper marked one. And if you don't have any of our packages, that's fine as well. Just head over to our website. You can get the full fly recipe there and you can still uh, tie along with us as we go. Okay, let's, uh, let's head over to the vise and let's get started. So you can see the minnow here. This is maybe a little bit of an untraditional looking minnow. Um, the Murdoch minnow looks kind of funny, but in the water, it, uh, it has a lot of good characteristics and it can be fished in so many different circumstances and be tied in different colors, although this is kind of the, um, the most popular. So we're gonna start off by getting that out of the vise. We'll get our streamer hook back in here. I'm gonna be tying with some UTC 140 in white just to kind of match the color of the fly. Uh, but any color is going to be be fine. You're not really going to see the wraps at all. Um, we're going to start by getting our thread started just behind the eye of the hook. And I'm going to work this back a little ways before cutting out that tag end. And then we'll take those thread wraps all the way back to the bend of the hook. So we're going to be using a few different materials to build this fly. Um, the tail is going to be built out of mostly flash material and a little bit of bucktail. That bucktail is just going to work to prop up uh, the rest of the flash. And then we move to some synthetic um, at the front end of the fly. So the first material we're going to tie in and in your kit you're going to see you have a bunch of bucktail like this. So I want you to go in and just grab um, a small pinch of it. We really are only using this to prop up the flash. So when I come in here and grab some, I'm not looking to grab a whole ton of it. You know, maybe just a 20 hairs or so. Hard to kind of judge that. We're not going to stack it. We're okay with it being a little uneven. It's going to kind of help that flash no matter how long it is to kind of hold that up and brace it. But I want to generally gauge the distance of this off the back of the fly. Um, if you have any hairs like this one that are just super long and out by itself, just pull that out. But we want to be one full hook shank behind and tie that in. Now it's just going to help to support that flash, like I said. So I'm going to go ahead and switch hands here. And I want to tie this in basically right where that barb is. So that's where I left my thread. I don't want to be too far into the bend of the hook itself. I want to stay right up on top. So I'm going to do a little bit of a looser securing wrap and then a couple more. So this has been taken out of pretty much right at the tip of a bucktail. So it doesn't have a lot of flare um, to it, which is what we want. We just want it to stay there nice and stiff, kind of like on a clouser minnow, just to hold up the other materials. So I'm gonna take a few wraps forward, uh, binding this to the top of the hook till I get about halfway down the hook shank. I'm gonna come in here and trim this out. We don't have to worry about this taper too much just because of the design of the, the fly, we're using um, some kind of bulkier materials up at the front. But as I come back here, what I do want to do is I want to pick up that bucktail. I want to slide a wrap underneath it. It's going to help prop it up a little bit. I'm going to do one and then go around the hook shank and then do one more, lift that all of it up, really snug that under there. And you can see that just kind of helps lift it up a little bit. Okay, so from here, I'm going to leave my thread. I'm kind of in between that barb and the, and the hook point. I'm going to go to my first material for the flash that I'm going to tie in. And that's going to be some crystal flash. So you can have a whole bunch of it there in your kit. Just go ahead and grab one long strand, okay? So what I'm gonna do to create the proper length is I'm gonna find the two tips to this piece. I'm gonna align them or get them pretty close. I'm gonna come down into the bottom of it, make sure I'm cutting it perfectly in half. And I'm just gonna repeat that process again. So I'm gonna fold it over one more time, get those tips aligned, and I'm gonna cut it in half one more time. So you just get them generally close and then slip your scissors in, find the bottom, cut it again. So that's gonna give us four strands times two. So we're gonna have eight strands in total to use here. I'm gonna find the midway mark on that flash, kind of pinching it right in the middle and I'm gonna tie it in right there and then I'll fold back over the other four strands. So that should extend roughly to the back of that bucktail. And the next flash we tie in after is gonna be just a smidge longer than that. So don't worry too much about how this orients on the hook because I'm gonna be able to control that with my thread wraps. First off, I'm gonna take a few wraps back to secure those four, bring my thread back forward, 
and then I'm gonna grab these four, I'm gonna pull them back on top and do the same thing. So all of these are gonna be meant to be stacked virtually right on top of the hook shank, being braced up by that bucktail. Okay, so bring those down there, bring my thread back forward again, just in between the barb and that hook point. And then we're gonna go to our next material, which is just a flash. Okay, this time it's not crystal flash, it's just this kind of mylar flash, kind of hard to see in the camera there. Um, just gives lots of light reflection off this specific material. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the other one, although these pieces aren't near as long. So when I grab one of them, I'm just gonna fold it over. Sorry, I gotta grab a full one here. There we go, you can have lots of these in your kit, so you'll be able to tell if it's, it's not the full length. I'm gonna double that over. And this time, I'm only gonna double it over once, because I'm just gonna end up doing this twice. So once I find that halfway mark again, I'm gonna lay that right on top. These are gonna likely be just a smidge longer than the crystal flash, which is totally fine. I'm gonna tie those in on top. Kind of repeat the process I did with the crystal flash, take those back a little ways, and then I'll fold these other two back and over. For the most part, I want those to sit basically just right on top of each other. It's kind of stacking on top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab another full length and do that one more time. So I'll fold that over again, just double it over, grab my scissors, find the valley, trim it, and then come back up here on top and lay those in again, finding, finding that halfway mark. We can always trim the flash after if it's a little uneven or doesn't look quite right. So don't worry if the length doesn't seem perfect. Tie these two in first. And then I'm gonna bring these ones back over, tie them in as well. Once I got that, I'm just gonna bring my thread back forward a little bit. So I wanna be able to lift all this up together and just kind of check the lengths. So when I come back here, you can see my flash is just a smidge longer, which I like it. That's kind of where I want it to be, but I do have a couple of those Mylar flashes that are a smidge long. So I'm just gonna trim them kind of more the appropriate length of the other flash. And that's what I should be left with at this point. Now we've kind of gone from uh, the flash now to building the body of the fly and we're going to build it out of a couple of different materials. The first one is going to be this material here, it's a synthetic. This could be used for a post material, it could be used for saltwater crab patterns, whatever it is, it's a synthetic and it's going to give us the, the look that we want. So I want to grab about, I would say that's about four inch piece, or is that eight inches, I don't know, it looks, could be eight. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that, <laughs> don't talk to my wife. Um, from this point, what I want to do with this longer strand is I want to actually go and grab a comb or I'm just going to use a, uh, my Velcro bar here. This is a, one of the Shores tools, really nice. And I'm just going to fluff it all up. Now it looks like it's not uh, very even anymore, but we're going, to, we're going to deal with that in a second. But I just want to make sure I get lots of material to come apart because it's quite locked in the strand. So all I'm going to do is to be combing that out. But as soon as I grab it and I pull it back together, it kind of binds to itself, which is good. Now I'm gonna come down to just one end and I wanna cut this off kind of perfectly even. And now I'm gonna match that up, find the bottom, do the same thing, the best that I can. Now I'm gonna double this over and get those two cut ends to match up. Okay, so I got them even like that. And I'm gonna be left with this loop at the bottom and I'm just gonna come in, cut that off even. Okay, so we're gonna tie this in as a doubled over piece. We're gonna tie it in on one side first and then the other. So remember, if I, uh, if I show you the fly again, that's the material that's making up the majority of the body. And it actually does look like it's straight cut off. So that's kind of the design of the fly. It builds this profile into it. We don't have to worry about tapering it at all. So I'm gonna start off by doing the near side of the fly first. So I'm gonna take my, um, my thread forward a bit I would say about to the midway part of the hook shank. So where the rest of the head's gonna be built out of a different material and this is gonna sit back in here like so. So I'm gonna start off on my side of the fly here, the near side, and I want this to extend just a little ways past the bend of the hook at the back, okay? And I wanna kinda work it around so that by the time I get both sides tied in, it's gonna kind of engulf the whole hook. So this first side I'm tying onto this side, kind of around to the bottom and a little bit around to the top. 
And then when I pull this through, kind of watch this little technique is I'm gonna pull it around the hook so it kind of folds and bends. And then when I fold it over, it's gonna completely cover the other side of the fly towards you guys. Now I'm gonna tie that in right there. Now we got a pretty decent bump there. Don't worry about that again. We're kind of lucky with the materials we're using. We don't have to worry too much about that, how the taper is gonna be built. Now, obviously one side is longer than the other here. You can see, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna pull out the second side that I tied in, pull it back so I find where it's even with my near side and I'm gonna cut it. So now if I show it to you, you can see it's evened out all the way around, okay? Now from here, we're gonna go to kind of our last major material and that is going to be some crystal cactus chenille. Looks just like this. Okay, stuff we'd kind of use if we were tying up a woolly bugger or something like that, uh, same idea. So it's all on a corded piece of rope in the middle. So I'm gonna peel just the very end off so I can expend that, or sorry, expose that little bit of rope. And that's what I'm gonna tie in. I'll tie that in right where I left off and tied in those other materials. Make sure I get that good and secure and then I can work my thread all the way forward to just behind the eye. I'm gonna throw in a quick little half hitch here just to save my work. And I'm gonna set my bobbin on my cradle so it's out of the way. Now we're gonna palmer this forward to create the, the rest of this fly. And as I go, I wanna pull and stroke the fibers of this chenille back. It's gonna help them all stack up and kind of make a really nice bushy looking body. So every time I wrap around, all I'm gonna do is be pulling that material rearward gonna help them stack each wrap on top of itself and give a pretty even appearance. If you don't do that, it kind of looks a little lumpy and you'll have little spaces where material isn't present. Whereas this way we get lots of wraps in, it stacks them really nicely, moving all the way forward. And we're just gonna, gonna continue doing this all the way to the eye of the hook. We don't have to worry about leaving any space up here because this is the last thing we're gonna be tying in up at the front. I'll bring my thread back in here, slide it behind, and as always when securing any material, we're gonna go behind and in front and repeat that. Make sure it's good and secure. Pull all that back, get a little bit of thread wraps right at the eye. And from right here, I'm just gonna whip finish. And then we just have a few other things we need to do to finish up this fly. So I'll just go ahead and whip finish it right here at the eye. Three or four turn whip finish. Do it one more time. That thread split on me, here we go. Just work around that cactus chenille the best you can. Well, this whip finish that right there. Pull that tight and then you can trim your thread out of the way. And then we can also go ahead and trim out that cactus chenille. Try not to cut too many fibers out of the way in the process, set that aside for your next fly. Now there's just a few things we're gonna do to uh, make this look even better to a fish. So most minnows that we have, have uh, a darker back than they do the rest of their body, whether it's gray or black or brown. I'm gonna do it with, a, with black this time. So I'm gonna come in here with a black Sharpie and I'm just gonna take just the very top of the fly and I'm gonna mark it black. And then I'm gonna come back onto this other synthetic and I'm just gonna do a little bit on top of that as well. So if I show it to you, you can see it just kind of gives that nice little minnow looking appearance. Just make sure that it's even onto the edges. Turn your fly so you can see it, make sure it looks even to you, which I like the look of that. Then from here, all we're gonna do is put on some eyes. So we're gonna use these eyes here, these stick on eyes, but obviously just the little bit of stickiness that's on them isn't enough to hold them in place. So we're gonna um, add some different glue to make that happen. You could use super glue. I'm gonna show you how I'll do it with um, some UV resin. I think it's a little easier. Um, but first off, what I like to do to kind of not lose control of these eyes is I just take one off, stick it on the back of my hand, grab another one, stick it on the back of my hand. Then I know where they are. They're easy to work with. I can set the paper aside. So first thing I wanna do though, is right where I'm gonna place the eyes, which is gonna be just back from the, the hook eye, I'm gonna come in here and just trim a little bit of a flat spot. It's gonna make this easier for the glue to bind a little deeper up against the hook shank. So I just trim a little bit of a flat side on that side. Come over here and do the same thing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my first eye started. So I'm gonna use my um, Bone Dry by Solarez. 
as my resin. Actually, just before I do that, if you have any little pieces of chenille up around the hook eye, just go ahead and trim them out the best you can. Just makes the head look a little cleaner. Probably doesn't matter to the fish at all, but looks a little nicer. So then I'm gonna come in here with my bone dry, and I'm gonna get a pretty good glob of it right where I trim that flat spot. Now it's important to have your UV right or light, sorry, kind of handy so it's ready to go. I like to turn it on and just put it down on the table so it's ready to cure as soon as I get going. Then I'm gonna come in with this eye. I'm gonna set it down right in that glue and I like to just take a finger and kind of press it into place. Come up, shine my light. Make sure it's good and cured. I should be left with something that looks like that. Now, yes, these eyes are probably gonna come off after a couple fish, but it really does kind of add to the, to the pattern to put them in to start with. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And you wanna try to even up the eyes the best you can. Might not be perfect, but you do the best you can to make it look as realistic as possible if you're going to the trouble of putting on these eyes in the first place. Come in, set this one down on the glue. Get my light out. Make sure it's good and cured. I should be left with something that looks like that. All right. Well guys, that is our Murdoch Minnow. Go ahead and give it a try. Give it a try in some different colors, whether you're fishing it on a lake or whether you're fishing it in the river or you're fishing it in the salt even. I think you're gonna find some success on this, uh, this little bit different minnow pattern than you've probably seen in the past. Okay guys, again, uh, my name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. This has been another quick tie brought to you by Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. I wanna remind you to like and subscribe to this video, hit that bell icon, it'll let you know next week when we have another fly coming your way. Until then, have a great week.